Okay, perfect. Okay, darling, ask me anything. I'm here for okay, you. Okay, so the next thing that I want to work on yeah. is I want to start working on my email sequences. Yeah. Because I literally don't have shit for my email sequences. Um, for when people, for, so when people sign up for, uh, for, for my ebook, when they download my ebook, like I have, I'm, I'm close to like 400 emails now. Right. That's great. And, you know, this is not me pushing shit. Like I haven't done anything to right. really do it. This is just all very organic. I've never run any ads. Yeah. So, so it's really cool um, being able to, to do that and, 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 and seeing that. Uh, but now I want to start also start making sales through my email. Yeah. Because I, I haven't really tapped into any of the email sequences. Right. So I guess the next thing is like me trying to figure out exactly what actions I want them to take. Yeah. And, uh, and then from there, I guess, because of right now, I want to, one, I want to be able to communicate with, to them that about my whole click funnels, you know, they, they sign up to click funnels, something that has worked for me. Um, here are, this, this is the bonuses that I want to share with you. Right. You know, and kind of like, I like, Oh, like take them through my journey. And I say, or oh, like, give them the tools that have worked for me in all these emails because they've just signed up. And then, you know, I, I want to share with them more about me. Right. Instead of selling them on a course, uh, I want to just be able to, sh you know, talk to them about it, share with them more stuff. And then. Is this uh, the vault? Is this the vault thing that would be selling? Or like, what do you imagine is the main thing that you would want to be selling through emails? Yeah, just the vault. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to get them to the vault because okay. once they're there, they're, they're gonna one they've already invested in me. Yeah. And I know the strategies there are extremely powerful, and then and then on top of that, they have so the difference between people like taking so much action and not taking any action and seeing results is that once they're in that group, like that group is just gonna be all about acquiring clients, and everybody's gonna be in it, like posting the struggles. They're gonna be posting their wins, and it just motivates people especially their pain, it's going to be such a strong support group. And I've seen it because I've already tested it. Right. So they're, they're going to be extremely active. Like in the 30 days to acquisition, that's what I had done the first time. Well, that's what right. I called it. Um, they, those people in there, like they were in it every single day, you know, posting videos because I made them like take videos of themselves and post their struggles, wow. like their pains and all of that. And, you know, like after we finished those 30 days, I, lit I, I wasn't active in that group. And all of a sudden, like, it just started dying down. Yeah. But during those 30 days, like, everybody was in it every single day, like, typing and, and communicating with each other and, and sharing their stuff. So if I know if I have a group like that, that is just everybody's motivating one another, like, the results will be there for sure. Yeah. The techniques are there. It's just all about taking action. What I think would be really useful for you is, like, there was a, okay, there was a girl who got, or there's a woman who got on the call yesterday in the second two hours, so when we were coaching people, mm -hmm. um, and she, her thing is, like, she does, like, live meditation kind of things with people, okay. and she was saying, like, oh, I want to put, like, do, like, Facebook ads for that, whatever. We had been Facebook friends for, like, maybe six months, and, and I said to her, I would highly recommend you don't put money into Facebook ads before you have an interesting kind of way of positioning yourself, because I said to her, like, will you forgive me for being honest? She's like, yeah. I was like, listen, I, we've been Facebook friends for six months. And I have, when I think of you, like with all due respect, first of all, I don't know what you do, but second of all, it doesn't have any flavor. Like I have like three clients who do like meditation stuff live on Facebook. And like when I, I know you as a person and I think that you're awesome, but I want to know if like your people get a distinct flavor or identity from you. Like that's a thing that Landon has done so well um, that he said, like when he curated that panel yesterday, he picked people that he considers like edgy, interesting people. Right. And mm -hmm. like, you know, yes, we're selling amazing things, but we're also selling our personality like to a big extent. Right. Yeah. And so like one asset that everyone has is their story. And not everyone makes like, it's an underused resource. Um, and I, 
I feel like, for example, like Hector's had an interesting story. I think he said like he had like problems with like alcohol and he was like overweight and like all these things, but he like sort of tells like us in one-to-one type things, but like how powerful is that? And this dude, like yeah. Brendan, I challenged him. I'm like, cause in one of our like chats, he told me a story. I'm like, have you told this to your people? And he's like in bits and pieces here and there. That's what every single entrepreneur friend of mine says in bits <sighs> and pieces here and there. And so it's like, that's, yeah, that's I, I, I suck at that. I'll help you with that. Like so happily because you're actually a fascinating dude. And like with love, I love you, Lewis. with love. I'll say like, I don't know if your people get enough of the flavor of what you're like, you give so much and you know, like hashtag value, value bombs all day. But like Mitchell gives value bombs all day and nobody can compete with that face. You know what I mean? So it's yes. like, <laughs> you have a good face, but like, come on, have you seen Mitchell's face? <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's like, but honestly you have like, what I loved was when we were in park slope, and I was asking you, like, what is this all about? Like, why are you doing all this? And you were saying about your parents and what you want to do for them and, like, and why. And, and you know, when you didn't have enough money to do, like, the Johnny thing, but then you were really scrappy and really resourceful. Like, that stuff is so cool. And, like, it's such an underused resource. And that's the thing that makes everyone, like, a little bit squeamish because it's sort of uncomfortable because it's, like, the most real version of you. Yeah, but yeah. the posts where I've like revealed the most about myself, um, I get shares and likes and lots of like private messages saying, thank you so much for telling that. So one thing that could like, you know, like 10 times all the amazing things that you're doing is if you had like a really strong like identity. And the question I sort of ask clients is like, if we took you or your personality and we boiled you for like seven hours, we just like kept boiling and boiling until it like, you know, like, you know, those like cubes that you put in like chicken stock or like try to make a soup out of like a cube of like, it's the chickeniest. This cube is so chickeny that it's enough to like chicken up a whole like huge pot of water. Like if we boil you, what's like, what is the bouillon of Lewis? You know what I mean? And if you can like share that, like this is all like personality marketing you yeah know? It really, yeah it really is and so like identity like what i wrote down is story identity results like i think those are the three things that really can like maybe it will say you because the the tough thing is you are competing with like the mitchells or like i think me and you are in such different areas that we're not direct competition but i think someone like a mitchell who is the kind of person who will bank like interview after interview after interview and he yeah. has and I think he's doing his I think he compiled all of his interviews and put it in a thinkific course for free or something for his people right yeah yeah and so like the thing that will distinguish you is if you're willing to tell your story in writing in speaking like I mean I can interview and ask you about stuff like it's totally up to you like say no if it's not your thing but but people no, I'd, I'd actually like that i mean i just i just wanted to be um because the, these things come out and i share these things with people like like how you said like when we're doing yeah. it one yeah. one, yeah. it's kind of like you, you know it'll be it'll just be me like sharing or you like you asking something yeah. and then i just go ahead and then you ask the right questions or yeah. like i get excited about sharing it uh because it's not something I feel like what what why I get excited for it is because I don't share it to the masses. Yeah. But then when we are on one on one, like I tell you, like man, you know, like when I went to Hip Hop International and I competed over there. See, that's so interesting. That's like honestly, Lewis, in this online world, it's a battle for attention, and so it's like it's like a boring dance routine. Like why watch it, you know? And yes. so your best competitive advantage is the the areas that you're different and interesting. Like Landon can't say that he like won this like break dance performance. I like doubt he's ever danced in his life. Um, and but should I share like, because I know that's so out of, uh, I know it's obviously it's part of my story yeah. and like even what I'm doing right now, like what I'm doing nanotech, you know, we're, we're freaking tackling stuff with like Alzheimer's. Like we're going to be able to know nobody in the world is doing this right now being able to like know 
And damn it, it's recording, so don't ever share this with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this is my fault. I, like when I told my friends I wasn't recording recordings. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Landon picking his nose. <laughs> oh my god! But but yeah, it's like we are, you know, we're freaking doing this, and we're able to identify people who have Alzheimer's before they they even know it, or being able to, uh, or right now we we like this week we are started doing a test, and on Monday we'll know the results. We're either five million times ahead of everybody that ever on earth or we're like extremely we're like two million like behind we're like super wrong so it, it's like two extremes right like whatever the result we get on monday like this is either going to be like published in a bunch of like scientific publications and stuff right uh and you know put our name out there or it's just going to be one another one of those tests but right like, you know i get to do all these things that are like outside of digital marketing that are also part of my story and part of what I'm doing on the daily. But I don't, but why I'm always hesitant about sharing that it's, is it relevant? It's because it's not, um, it's kind of like, even though it's part of me, it's, I guess it's relevant to, to what I'm trying to be known as right right now, obviously on the internet. Um, and I don't know if other people are going to be able to like relate, you know, cause like if we, if we speak as, as friends, like, yeah, you're going to find that really cool. Yeah. Uh, the really cool accomplishment. Just like if you were to tell me something, you know, that you're doing like, Oh, that's interesting to me. Yeah. But I don't know if it's interesting to a large audience. Yeah. You know, the thing is like people want to know you as a human. Cause like, I think that we're tired of seeing those like Ty Lopez types where they're like standing in front of their like car and they like take the like the blanket off it's just like a bunch of boxes but like you know like we're just like tired of seeing all of the like perfect people who already have their shit figured out like I think that one thing that's super endearing about you is that you're actually an engineer and that like you're you're in school like waiting to get out like that's something that's like (laughs) So like you're like in jail. You're like I guess. <laughs> For real, oh my god. <laughs> but like that stuff is so the stuff that's interesting to your friends will make you friends with other people. Like it can be kind of tedious if all we talk about is our thing. But like I think it would even be fun if me and you do like an expose on each other, where we're like, listen, my cognitive communication shit is a piece of me. I'm actually also like a really good cook. I'm also a really great artist, like a visual artist, right? Um, I'm also, I wrote a book of poetry. Like I, I, um, I, I do collage art. Like I do, like I do a lot of stuff that's not my like one thing that I'm known as online, right? Mm-hmm. And that's actually really interesting to people. It's so much more interesting that like, I want to know like, what is like, I don't know, like what does Arnie eat for breakfast or like, what are, what are his relationships like? Has he ever had a girlfriend? <laughs> like, you know, like I want to know, I want to know about people's people that I admire. I want to know about their lives, you know? Um, You're right. And like a lot of people that do follow me outside of, you know, my group and actually like on social media, you know, they're the ones that I connected with the most. Uh, look, Andrew, I should just posted a picture of us on. Aww. That's so cute. (laughs) But, like, for example, one thing my friends find most funny about me is, like, I have this, like, older Romanian father, and he just, like, does crazy shit, and it's really funny. Like, I used to find it mortifying in high school, but, like, it became really funny later on in life. So it's, like, all of that, your culture, like, um, you know, where were you born again? Peru. Yeah, like, that's interesting. Like, I know people think that this shit's not relevant, but then, like, what makes you different than the other 100,000 digital marketing agency people, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. It's hard to persuade someone to do it because it's, like, hard for them to do. But when they do, they're always grateful because they're like, wow, people really thought that was fun, interesting. They really connected with that, right? And this is the relationship economy. They're not just buying your shit. They're buying you. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very true. 
So yeah, if, I, I did. so do you feel like that's the only thing that's missing? Like me sharing more of me? I think you sharing more of you is definitely. And like, also I, cause I'm struggling between, okay. Uh, I know. So I'm struggling between the content of hmm. engagement posts, right? Like questions that I ask or stuff yeah. like that. Also like, the, cause I, since I'm very, I think of like percentages and I think, you know, numbers, all that, all the yeah, time. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, how much 30% value, you know, 20% like engagement posts, like 10% yeah. my story, you yeah. know, 10% interviews. Like I want to allocate that into like numbers. So like I have that laid out like that. Yeah. You know, it'd be fun. How about this? Okay. Uh, you tell all I'll interview you I'll get some interesting shit out of you when as a as a thank you for when you like lay out my click funnels thing because for me that will be really exciting to see so I can finally start like sending people to it or like not yet I mean, I mean it's just gonna like literally the the click funnels thing since people since you're gonna be sending people in there yeah. it's not gonna be anything like fancy or anything out of it. it's yeah, always gonna cool. look nice but it's uh it's just going to be straight to the point. Like, you know, give me, give me your damn email and your name. Yeah. And then, but then the one for like the actual sell yourself kit or whatever the hell it's yeah. called. Um, I'll send you the copy for that. But when I, when I see those two things, like the opt in with the report and the other one, and you feel free, like you're good with headlines and things like that too. And with phrasing when it comes to the practicalities of like how to make it special for people, you're good at that. Um, like just, I think it would be really fun to like, to I'll help you write your story. Like I'll help you do like I think it would be fun if we did like top that. ten top ten things you didn't know about me. Oh, I've been so like okay, this is cool. We should just keep this up and keep it going and like check yeah. like because I know we talked about this in New York, like that we wanted to, you know, collaborate and that Louis, I'm serious. Listen, if I actually like like and care about a friend of mine, I'm like all I find their projects even more fun than my own, and it's like a pleasure. No, like same, same, same for me. <laughs> like this is my this is my joy. Like I did a master's in creative writing. I wrote like a three hundred book page book of poetry. Like I love the creativity of it, and I think I just think what a shame that I get to know who you are, but your people, the ones that you want to buy from you, don't get to know who you are, and you are such an interesting person, right? Like. Not everything that we talked about was business stuff. Like yeah. I thought the the moment that I said, you know what, this is such a sweet, good guy is when you were talking about what you want to do for your parents. Right. And then when you're like, oh, you're still in university. I'm like, that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, poor kid. <laughs> like, that's so cute. <laughs> but, like, I think, like, I love the stories that interesting people tell. Like, Seth, uh, not Seth Godin. Tim Ferriss tells the story of how um, he was working so hard that his girlfriend left him and yeah. um, and left him a sign that said, like, business hours end at 6 p.m. or something. Like, you know, like, I think that one reason that I know, right, as she left, she, like, left him with that sign. Damn, um, the But that's something that's so relatable. Literally, like, my my – friends and family always tell me like all you ever talk about is business because they're like literally like what's new i'm like funnels <laughs> <laughs> and they're like they're like paloma please stop saying the word <laughs> and, and every time i call my friend i'm like i'm got i'm like i got good news like well you sold a course <laughs> like, like, they don't care <laughs> like damn see that's exciting yeah. to, to us it's so exciting because you know what? It shows you what's possible. Now I've sold one-on-one. -on -one. I've sold a group, which we we sold out of it, you know, like I had 10 spots and 15 people wanted in. That was really exciting. And then, and then now to have sold two online courses, like honestly, when I sold one of these for 500 bucks that I already made and it was in my account just after a conversation, I was like, that was the easiest I've ever made money before. And I've made like I've made five hundred bucks in a day before, but it's like it's about the fact that it was easy to do that, and I didn't have to give my time to do that. You know, like it's meaningful because it means that we we have our life back, we have our freedom back, and we have our time back. You know. Yeah. yeah. So I would love. I think it'd be so much fun. Like, don't don't leave yourself at home. Like, don't leave yourself out of your work. 
because that's what your work is. Like you're, you chose the work that you chose because of your life, life stuff for myself too. Like, honestly, if, if it weren't for like, um, stuff about family, whatever, I would review, I would talk about everything. The only challenging thing is your parents' stories are sort of their own, but they're also your story. And so you don't want to like make them uncomfortable or like not everyone's cool with the whole like online thing. And I get that. There's so many fucking crazy peeps, but, um, but as much as you're comfortable telling, like, I think it'd be so fun if you told your peeps about your, like your dance competition stuff, like, you know, like you and JLo went for coffee and then, you know, you like Mark Anthony caught you two in bed together. And she was like, Hi, puppy, you know, like, <laughs> like just your, speak your truth, man. Like, tell them what you like to eat for breakfast. Like, tell them, like, if yeah, you like, watch, I didn't notice that because, like, some people I ask for, like, oh, you know, what's your morning routine, or like, what are some because, like, I asked some, like, even even I failed that, you know, I asked the question of the day, or like, I asked something from them and I learn about them, but right. I don't care. I don't care answers. Answers to that question that I that I said, right. It would be fun if it was like a behind the scenes confessional expose where you're like, guys, I have something to tell you. I'm from Peru and I'm not legal. <laughs> or like, you know, like you say, like, I'm going to be telling you some weird stuff about me today. Like, this is going to be a weird conversation. I'm going to be like, yo, guys, this is going to be a weird week. I'm just going to be dropping a bunch of like things about, you know, th- these are my confessions. And then every yeah. single week, like drop something. Doesn't Usher have a song, Confessions? Yeah. I think it'd be so fun if, like, I make it a we have, like, Confessions video. Week. Yo, Lewis, this is going to be fun. We take lots of different leaders, and we have Confessions Week, where, like, everybody has to drop their confessions about their life. And when you do, you have to post the Usher song right there. <laughs> like, we just challenge all group leaders. Have to have one post this week. Here are, like, my top ten confessions. For me, like, I stole um, Spice Girls gum when I was a kid from the convenience store, like, all the time. Um, you know, like I was allergic to everything growing up, like everything. Like I just think like just like little teeny tidbits of who you are. Um and you and you it would be really funny if you started the video with like guys, I can't believe I'm telling you this. You might leave my group. Like I'm gonna share some embarrassing stuff, I'm gonna share some family secrets, I'm gonna share my grandma's mole recipe. Um, you know. And my other abuela, I'm going to tell you all about her. Like, she's nuts. I'm going to tell you about, like, my my brother married my cousin. Like, it's going to get, get personal. It's going to get really personal. Oh, shit. Because I think that you should have, a, 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 like, an aura that you would, like, when people think of me, they have a certain feeling that comes along with it, whether yeah, they like yeah. it or not, you know? Or, like, Landon or, I don't know. I think Arnie could use more of that, really. For yeah, example, no, like, I think so too. His stuff is good, but um, he could use some more personality and flavor too. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, because I feel like the what's attractive about him is that he's always traveling. Yeah, that's but, one thing about him. Yeah, but I don't really know much about mm-hmm. him. Like, I don't see him act as him as outside of like, like I can't relate to him as a friend. Like, I can relate to you. Right. And you know, and, and that's what your people want to you. Your people want to think of you as a friend, not just as an authority. You know, like, it was funny because you know how sometimes Arnie's waiting for the bus or waiting for the plane and he'll post, ask me anything. So I asked him like five questions. One, I was like, what were you like in high school? The other one was like, how many people in this world know the real you? And like, well, for the what were you like in high school? He said like he was like a skater guy. And I'm like I could so see that he has like a friend who like writes on his like shoes and sharpies, and he has like spacers and so emo. Um, <laughs> and then when I asked him, I'm like, how many people know the real you? He just wrote no to that question. Damn. So it is really a contest of like attention, but also just like being yourself makes people like you. Yeah. Um, and so I would say story, identity, results. And also, I want to know you as the blank guy. Like, it's, it's so much easier to refer to you if I can stereotype what you do. 
right? So, like, hopefully when you think of Paloma, you think of confident communication or badass confidence, right? Um, when you think of Landon, you think I of... Need a, I need a cool, like, tagline that goes along with, you know, social media strategies. Right. Something like that. Something that... It was something that deals with social media because obviously, like, I've been able to... Before I was able to monetize social media, like, I used to preach, like, guys, social media is where it's at. Like, I knew how powerful it was in terms of communicating with individuals that are, like, way higher than you and then you have... Yeah. Right. Um, not not the making money part. But now that I actually mm. am earning money through social media, right? like, oh, crap. Now, now it's even more powerful. Now I can, aside from it, me already knowing how powerful social media is, right. I'm you know, living off of social media. Uh, mm. And so something along those lines I can represent. And Almost like a social media VIP. I think it's, like, would be kind of interesting, like, Everybody spends their time on Facebook. Like, a lot of our friends are on Facebook all day doing Facebooky stuff. And, like, some days I'm no exception to that, right? But you're the person who turns likes into dollars. Right? Dollars. Yeah. Like, and that could be your distinguisher where you're like, all of these fools are on social media thinking that all you have to do is post a question with, like, a bright blue background and suddenly you're Mark Cuban. Well, I'm the kid who knows actually how to turn likes into dollars. And that's why people come to me. I'm a social media VIP because I understand why we're using it. Um, you know. There's a, do you know Billie Jean? Um, like from the Michael Jackson song? No, no, no. <laughs> He's a marketer from San Diego. Oh, uh, he sounds familiar. Oh, he's like the black dude. Billy Jean is marketing. Yep, yep. See, he, that fucker has a thing because I know what that is, even though I don't know what that is. Like he has uh, clicks into customers. He has a course that that's what it's called, clicks into customers. Like yeah, I mean that's, you could. That's a dope ass title right there. You know. I mean you could. Well, if you were in Canada, I'd be like likes to loonies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one dollar coin i don't even know if you know that but yeah, um <laughs> but if your thing is like likes to dollars that's like that would be kind of fun and you could sort of play on that theme where you're like most people don't understand why they're actually on social media and it's actually a game like you're like a, the chess master like social media chess master social media chess master that's really cool because I used to, I used to love chess when I was younger. Like, okay, this is like, cool. like, like I thought that I was going to go pro. Like at one point, like during recess, I would yeah. go to the library and that would be like, yo, teach me some dope ass moves in chess. That's, and you're like the engineer guy. Yeah. I think social media chess master can be really cool. You're the dude who turns likes into dollars where it's like literally like, you know, everyone's just moving their pawn up forever. And you're like, bitch, there's a horse there. There's a queen, like, it. Did, listen, the truth is, Lewis, it doesn't matter what your meta- engineer. That would be cool, except the only thing is, it's not as figurative, it's not as metaphorical, because actually, yeah. there could literally be that. Um, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you know, like, that's pretty literal, too. <laughs> you're like, I know, SEO specialist. <laughs> Close, but not quite. <laughs> Lewis, I was helping this client, I did this, like, one week intensive with her it was going great like she had so much momentum i see her like a week later she's like paloma maybe i'll become a bus driver <laughs> i was like where the fuck in the plan was that i didn't say you could do that like, like this is what happens when you think your own thoughts like i leave you to your own devices for a week and you go from social media mogul to like maybe i'll be a bus driver <laughs> what the fuck don't waste my time <laughs> so no but like Pick a metaphor, and it really doesn't matter what it is. But you know how Mata Madonna's material girl, and that stays with her for life. Landon is the sales gorilla. Um, the reason I one reason I changed my name from the negotiation project to the Badass Communicators Club is because I wanted to offer them an identity to be part of, like they could be a badass, you know. So um, you could say like I have my social media chess masters, and you can have imagery of, around that, right? Like the thing that will help people refer to you is you have a sticky image that stays in their brain because the only thing about 
accelerator is, right? Um, it's so abstract, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And and there's a special yeah, like the whole term like pictures. entrepreneurial accelerator is super broad, and that's why I wanted to like people get the picture, but then before joining. I have them now like read the group description so then they understand what the hell they're getting into. Yes. So with like entrepreneur, anybody can identify themselves with that, you know? Yeah. But now. Accelerate can be in any direction, right? Yeah. In any way. Exactly. So now it's kind of like funneling them down, I guess, in, in a sense, once they join my community. Right. Like just, you can draw out this, whatever metaphor you commit to, but you really do have to commit to it. Because it takes like about yeah I know and that's the that's the, that's the scariest part though like because it's like I gotta find something that I truly love and that I can really stand behind yeah and that I can you know really represent and um, just own it I need yeah. to I need to find something that I can own yeah but I wouldn't be too scared about it because like for example when I started the group, I called it the negotiation project because negotiation was one of the things I was teaching. Well, that wasn't everything about who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just important that when someone says Lewis equals blank, there's a clear something in their mind. Cause if there's not, then they can't refer to you. And like our memory is so shot with all of this content that's being thrown at us. So like, um, you know, I talked to a client of mine, Monique, and she came up with the title, like, she's the power woman. And so she hashtags everything with that. And when I introduced her as my group admin, I said, and now Monique, the power woman, like, um, I think like social media chess master or like likes to dollars or, um, you know, what I, I, I like, I, I like, I definitely like, like, likes to dollars. Yeah. The thing is that, and not everything that I do, uh, necessarily a like would turn into dollar because you don't need to like something and uh, oh you don't need to click like on something, you know. Because yeah. what I do is I do lead generation, so yeah. the leads are the ones that are turned into dollars. Well, what if you say something like I teach you social media chess. You say there are a lot of people who are going blindly, just randomly moving their horses and their pawns. Well, any good chess master knows that there's a strategy and you start with the end in mind. This is about end game. This is how you can checkmate your prospects, right? And you like go into that metaphor and you really like, you extend that metaphor. You wear like shirts that have like chess pieces on it. Maybe we make like a chess piece with your face on it. Like, there are certain things that you might think are almost like borderline cheesy, but that's how you know you're on the right track because this is a memory game. Actually, they call it mnemonics. The thing that helps you remember it. Like if you were trying to remember, I don't know if you ever played any instruments in school, but yeah, uh, when I was super young. Yeah. So when they were trying to teach you what the notes are, um, I remember it. Every good boy deserves fudge E G B D F or whatever it is. That's a mnemonic. That's a way to help you remember it, right? Mm -hmm. and so the thing is, like, I, I, I really need one. Like, um, you know, it's funny. Like, it's easy to, like, say to other people that they need it because we all need it. Like, I did your group description before I did mine. My group description needs a real makeover. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, I, feel like that's, I feel like this is what we all need. We need somebody to want to bounce off th these ideas with all the yeah. time, no matter what right. level you are. Right. And, and and also just be able to make progress. Cause like you said, like I would talk, like, I don't know, like I'm more driven to help you out and help you out in your and business. Same. I want to do that for you. And then I would kind of just leave my stuff like on the side. You, you know? know what, Lewis, I really find this fun. And so like, it no, is same here. pleasure, yeah. my pleasure. Like let, let us just make this time to do this. And, like, if you want to be the social media chess master, I'll help you, like, develop that metaphor and extend that metaphor and say, like, you know, a kind of contrast, right? To be a good salesperson, you have to be a contrast master. So you are contrasting. There are some – everybody has the same chess board, and everyone has the same number of pieces. We all come into this life, like, you know, with the same, same world we enter, same chess board. But some people are chess masters. And some people are always losing the game. And it's not a coincidence. 
It's like there are certain strategies that help you win the game. For example, beginning with the end in mind. For example, knowing who the powerful members of the board are. Like, yeah, damn it. I do need something because Billy Jean, his thing is geniuses, right? He 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 goes off with his last name. Jean. Right. Right. Geniuses. Uh, Dan Henry now his has his savage marketers. He's like, hey, savage marketers, you know, savage right. marketing academy. Right. Um, Grant Cardone, you think of 10x. Um, you know, like 10, 10, 10 fairs, you think of four hour. Like, yeah, and like he's always just testing shit on himself all the time. Right. Um, yeah, like uh, Mel Robbins, the five second rule. Yeah, you need to have something attached to you because otherwise, like, I think you're awesome. So I would love to refer to you. But honestly, I don't always know ex- when someone says, okay, what does Lewis do? I'm like, well, like, add stuff like digital stuff, marketing (laughs) stuff, Facebook stuff, numbers stuff. He speaks Spanish. He's an engineer. Like it's like, and so if you make it easy for me, then I want to refer to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so everyone has to do this to stereotype themselves so that you can take a seat in your prospect's brain. So I think the chess master could be a fun one. And you say, listen, I started playing chess when I was, and you know, okay. Okay, I've got it. Okay, 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 Lewis, listen. Just give me a tenth of a 1% when you're, like, too famous to talk to me. Listen. (laughs) So this is what you do. Okay, this is so good. Okay, like, I'm going to die before I tell you this is so good. Lewis, this is so good. I hope you're sitting down. Just say it. If you're sitting down, sit down again. Fold yourself in half. Okay. (laughs) So there's this dude who makes the spicy wings challenge where he invites, like, celebrities on to eat these 10 spicy wings with him and as he does it he interviews them right Mm -hmm. you challenge entrepreneurs to games of chess that you live stream because there's nothing more fun than like watching people play chess and like rooting for a certain side and being like oh that person's an idiot they're gonna get eaten Mm -hmm. right there so like i would love to watch you and Mm -hmm. play a game of chess you and me play a game of chess you'll so see our personalities in the way we play and like how fun with and as you're talking you're talking about like you know, chess master strategies, like in the social media marketing world. But at the same time, you're actually literally playing a game of physical chess together and you can fly people in to play chess with you and you can sit, like tell them what your score is. Like talk about like getting attention and watching it live, like challenge Tim Ferriss to a game of chess. How cool would that be? Because you're the chess master. You're the social media chess master. And I could see you with like a tank top with like, I have this friend, Justin. He makes really cool clothes. And he could put anything you want on and he can make you something that like looks really cool. Like um, he could make you a cool like chess master and like that could be on your hat. That could be on your swag, you know, um, and you're making little chess masters in your group. Like and <laughs> you could even like visually like you like show an infographic and you can show the pieces like this is, you know, uh, figure out in every group who the queen is. Because the queen turns the head of the king, you know, like, you want to pick a metaphor, there's enough that you can enjoy, like, massaging and using in different contexts. But you can say, like, how to checkmate the competition, you know, like, you could so go off that, really, and, like, it could be fun, too. Yeah, Yeah, that is a really great thing, but I'm just, like, I don't know, I feel like I have to love chess and the topic of it. Because I could definitely come up with now, just just like you said. Yeah. But. It could be like a dance off. It could be like a, you want to like, be like Spanish Rico Suave, whatever. Like you can pick any. Yeah, there's, there's some way that I could te- like, because if I turn every, like it into like a dance or like. It could be a dance battle kind of thing. Like a dance battle. Like, I don't know exactly how we would work that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why me either. Because like chess just fits so perfectly. Right. But I'm, and then I'm also trying to. I also want to go off of like, let's say with engineering. I also want to see how you know how you can incorporate that too. Yeah, the thing is, like, no offense, engineering's not as interesting. Yeah. It's um, interesting. <laughs> and it's also more the abstract. The only thing that's interesting about it is like you tell people that you do engineering, they're like, "Wow, he's smart." Yeah. <laughs> like, oh wow, he's gonna get paid a lot of money. 
<laughs> like, that's what people think when I say engineering. I think it'd be so fun if you like start off with like all of your weirdness where you're like talking in Spanish about engineering while you're break dancing. Be like, this is who I am, yo. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. <laughs> you know, like tell any stories you have about Peru, like automatically that's interesting. Like be like this one time I was climbing this mango tree and this guy was about to hit, like cut my leg off with a machete. <laughs> but instead, I told him, hey, man, don't worry. I'll optimize your funnels. And he didn't kill me. <laughs> like, just anything. Like, like, if you, it's so important to be, it's like, it's non-negotiable to be interesting. It's non-negotiable to have a thing. And, and like, you have to, and that's why shit catches on. You know? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to take this exercise and, like, talk you about it brainstorm with my with, with yeah. my roommates since they since they know me yeah it's just like i'm gonna be like yo give me some words that you know would describe. what am i known for yeah or you i mean have you done the exercise when you post on your like personal facebook when you on think the of me, what, what's the first thing that you think of no i haven't done that it'll be fun like what are three words that pop into your brain when you think of me and you say like be super super honest Oh, man, that's that's. I know it's scary. It's not out there. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Should I put that on my personal profile. Yeah, I mean, about to do that right group, now. everyone's just gonna be like blowing you, but like if you do it on your like personal page, then hopefully, like you know, like people who really like knew you in high school and things like that, will just say like, when be really honest. This is a this is a marketing exercise I'm doing. When you think of me, what are the top three words that pop into your brain? There's no wrong answers. Be really honest. Damn, I'm about to do this right now. Yeah, do it. So, <laughs> what are the top three words that pop into your mind like right away when you think of me? Think of me. What are the top three words that pop into your mind right away when you think of me? And then you say, be super honest. Don't blow smoke on my ass. Be super, be super honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you like when I added in your group description where it's like, no self-promo, <laughs> no dick pics? Oh, my God. I almost posted that. And I was like, holy crap. Good thing I looked over it. I was like, it would have been funny. It's like, I would use that joke if, if Mitchell were active in my group. <laughs> That would be so free with 20. So wow. I think it would be amazing if, like, for, before the next time we chat, you say to me, like, Paloma, this is a metaphor I'm going to commit to, and I'll help you with the – I'll help you extend the metaphor and play with it. And, like, don't, don't, be, don't labor over it too much. Like, honestly, it's just something to associate with your name. Like, I told you about the planking for Pizza Girl, right? <laughs> like, like – like, did you ever have any nicknames growing up? Any nicknames? Uh, no, just just like my family calls me Sino, which is short, you know, for my full name. Right. Um, and you have one sister, right? Yeah. Your little sister? Yeah. Do, does your family make fun of you for anything? They well, they used to make fun of my hair. When, when I had my, like, little afro, they used to call me arbolito which means like little tree <laughs> that's funny <laughs> anything like that you should tell them <laughs> like okay my sisters mercilessly they, they ripped me a new asshole when i um i started off because i thought okay i need to call my people something right in my group and i'm like okay paloma's negotiators i'll call them negotiators <laughs> <laughs> And it like stuck for like a bit and it like people started and then my sisters like mercilessly made fun of me and I'm like I can't like I can't stay with it. We gotta phase this out. Like literally I would be at like the dinner table and my sister would be like, Would you, my favorite pagotiator, send me this? And I'm like, I can't. I can't handle it. But um yeah, like think about like that kind of stuff about like your family made fun of you because you look like a little tree. Like that's funny. That makes people like you, you know? <laughs>
<laughs> so how about this? I think it would be like useful. Why don't we assign each other some homework? Because okay. last time we did, we did your group description. I have your signed copy of the book that I'm going to send in the mail ASAP. Okay. Um, what else? I started writing copy for my click funnels. You went through the course. So what, what would you say is our homework? Like you give me homework. I'll give you homework for next week when we check in. Um, so, so I guess my homework, uh, well, you said to give you homework. Yeah. You give me homework. I'll give you homework. Okay. Uh, wait, let me, before we finish. Cause the reason I asked you about like flavor and identity and stuff is cause when you're talking about your email sequence, like the way to make it the best it could be is when it has a Lewis flavor to it, you know? Mm hmm yeah and by I'm the gonna, way you no, can gonna, what's up sorry you can send me like i'm really 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 here for you you can send me some emails if you want me to have a look and you know just give you some first impressions on that stuff okay cool yeah yeah sounds good i'm um, about so i'm about to post this what are the top three words that pop into your mind right away when you think of me be super honest uh and i want to add like a little feeling thing yeah. Feeling or celebrating. Vulnerable. <laughs> Feeling vulnerable. Feeling scared. Feeling scared as shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going I'm to put feeling scared AF. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that'd be funny. Me. Yeah. Feeling scared AF. Tag, are you friends with your mom on Facebook? Yes. Tag her in that one. Mm -hmm. Like, mama, be honest, but not too honest. <laughs> Have to uphold my image online. Oh, shit, it's up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I promise you at least you get one for me. Definitely. Okay, so, right, so homework. You are what? gonna so we're gonna be working on your free ebook. Yeah. Which which is the your lowest level of your value ladder aside yeah. from your Facebook group. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna beef that up today and I'll send it to you. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. Um so I'll work on that funnel. It'll be like they get the free ebook and then after they click on it, they'll go to the next page. Yeah. It, then I want you to kind of give them like a one to two minute thing of like who you are. And then I'll link them to back to um, your group. I'll put a, li a link back to your group. Great. Um, and then just tell them that they'll be getting their, you know, the ebook in, in the mail. Okay. But if there are any other places that you want me to link them to, so I'll just be like, Hey, you know, go to, go to the group. Yeah. Basically go to the group um so like a one to two minute video like your or just right so it'll be so it'll be like um on the on the page because all the traffic that you're going to be sending to the ebook is it going to be it's just going to be people that kind of already have a feel for you right uh probably but also it would be nice if like when people are just getting to know me um it, it's nice to be able to have something to give people when they get to know you right uh-huh yeah exactly so like even if it's but sorry let me rephrase that so it would be people that um you've you've communicated with like yes yeah or, yeah, or like yeah. I've seen you yeah so it'll just be like even if they don't know me i can be like hey you know speaking about that like i have i have this resource that you can download yeah here. Go, go here right um, so so it's traffic that you're sending that way yeah not yeah. people are stumbling upon this by mistake Right. So the one to two minutes would be, did you mean like to do? Oh shit! I already got some some. Uh, <laughs> this guy says smart AF. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. So should I do like a one to two minute video saying, "Hey, thank you so much for um, thank you so much for giving me your email so I can send you a shitload of content you don't want now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you'd be like, just kidding. I'm, I'm actually going to send you, you. You could start it off like that. Just cause... kidding. I'm sending you internet porn. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, so a one to two minute video saying, 
thank you so much for for what for opting i don't want to say opting in for grabbing your report or like why am i thanking them for that um you're just going to be thanking them for um giving you're gonna you're gonna say um it's heading your way i'm excited for you to read it yeah don't yeah don't even say thank you for signing up because they're gonna sign on up and they're like wait i signed up <laughs> you a bitch how could you lie to me <laughs> How could you do this? I trusted you. I gave you my email. I thought you just, I thought you were going to take my email, throw it in the toilet. You put me in a sequence. <laughs> okay, so I say, bitch, it's heading your way. Check your spam filter. <laughs> yeah, check your spam folder. Um, and then also, if you're not already in my group in which I, yeah. I give complimentary content to what you're going to be reading. Mm -hmm. And also like in the, in the free book, uh, <laughs> these people are giving some funny ass response. <laughs> uh, so any, anything that, um, on the ebook itself, it's going to say, um, join my group. Yeah. Join my group. Like it's going to say some stuff, uh, you know, linked linked to the, to the group. But do I like give like a bitly kind of thing? Because it'll be a PDF, right? So it's not like they can like click it to my group. What do you mean, like? So like, okay, I want it would be nice if when they get the report, they want to go to the group if they're not yet in it, right? Mm -hmm. But so to link them there, do I just tell them what the group is called or give them like? Oh a no, no, no! Like I'm literally gonna create buttons on the funnel that they can just click and then it'll open up a new window that it will be a group right but then in the pdf though on the pdf you can also create like you can also include links like if you make your pdf oh, within really? like canva or something yeah okay. yeah you can include links oh wow okay i didn't know that so is there something special i have to do with this just literally put the link in there and it'll be okay yeah yeah it'll be okay, totally fine. okay that's great Okay, good. So I know what I need and to if, do. Yeah, and if, and if you're struggling with something, you know, just let me know because... Perfect. Uh, I'm excited. I, I'm, it will be a really... It's been something that I've needed to do forever to start collecting emails. Like, I really want to make sure I have everyone in my group's email. Um, so... And, and, and try to um, go ahead and get on your, on your... One of your questions, you know, yeah. when people are joining your group. Right. Go ahead and turn that into an email question. Right. And should I say like the report report is going to be heading your way soon? Yeah. Yeah. Say, hey, the report is going to be heading your way soon. Um, but please make sure that you check your spam folder because it may sometimes be in there. And if right. you can, please reply back when you do get the email. So because once somebody replies back, okay. uh, you immediately will never go back to their spam folder. Can I say all of that in one of the questions? Should oh, I? no, no, no. Sorry. I, that was for like the video whenever you oh, like. Okay, 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 they, okay. Yeah, you think. But right. on the question, let me read to you what I actually have. Hmm. So let's see. Okay, so I have, um, I have two required, right? One one says welcome. We built a community for digital entrepreneurs. I tell them to read the group description. Promise not to spam. They're like, yep. So and then I ask them what their number one business goal is, and then what's optional is I say, do you want my free ebook on blank? Right. If yes. so, drop your email here, and we'll send it within a week. Yeah. Because there's no way that I'm. That's good. Right. Um, that's great. Is there anywhere that all of the answers that people give, like once you've accepted them into the group, are the answers that they gave you gone? Or is there some like repository where they put all those answers? Once they've given me what? what okay. So let's say you have a question like, what's your number one business struggle as to get into your group? Mm -hmm. And then obviously as you accept them, you read it and you accept them. But then the answers go away. Yeah. Does Facebook store that anywhere for you? No, I wish. 
Like they should. So, cause I, I mean, it'll be, it'll be cool if you can export all that into like a CSV file. Yeah. I'm surprised that Facebook doesn't do that. That's why I wasn't worried about copy pasting it, but I want to no, get no, people's exact copy paste language. That. You yeah, copy you gotta, paste it. Yep. I should have done that. I thought of course Facebook would keep it for you. Mm-mm. You're that's copy nuts. Paste. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. So story for, uh, for you, it would be, um, I mean, if you hate writing, don't worry. Um, but maybe you can do a brainstorm of what you think are like the top 10, 20 anecdotes that make you who you are, funny things, emotional things, like things about you that, that characterize you and shape who you are. Yeah, like deep. See, like I, I've, I've had these type of like questions asked, like I've asked myself these questions and like I've thought about these things. Yeah. And I have never written them down. And like right now, since I told you I was on like that 45 minute drive. Yeah. Like I, I was thinking the whole way I was like these, like I hear a bunch of podcasts and interviews and like, I love these questions and I want to be able to answer those questions for myself and like have like yeah. a document that is like, all my answers and like everything that I thought about. Yeah. But yeah. So what's my homework? So I would like do a brainstorm of the shit that you think is interesting about yourself. Um, and it will help you that you're, you posted that question, but ask like people who've known you for a long time, ask your sister, like, what do you think is interesting about me that people might not know? For example, like I helped this um, girl write her grad um, like application for the school she wanted to get into. And I said, okay, what's interesting about you? She's like, nothing really. I'm like, come on, everyone has something interesting about them. Eventually we dug around and she said that she traveled to like 10 countries in Asia when she was like in grade nine or something. And she was, she visited orphanages in like Cambodia and like all this stuff that was like, but she never thought that that was interesting enough to mention. I'm like, I haven't visited 10 Asian countries in like a two month period and been to like a Cambodian orphanage. Like, that's cool and interesting. So sometimes you need other people to be like, no, the thing that you take for granted, that's duh about you. Like, you know, my family thinks it's kind of fun that like, let's say in our fridge at home, there could be like milk an avocado and like some beans. And suddenly I've like whipped up like a gourmet dinner out of that. Like, like every, it's like always iron chef. Cause there's like never, no one ever wants to go grocery shopping. So like, that's like a special talent of mine, you know? So, um, or someone's like, whenever I think of you, I think of like pink lipstick. I'm like, for real? Like, so like, you never know what it is that people associate with you, but, um, so that we can develop what your signature style is like yeah. what your persona is and, and extra points. If you have one or two metaphors that you think, okay, this could be the thing we could run with. And then we can develop that metaphor and apply it to your, to what you do in your business. But it, it doesn't have to be something that you want to like get married to for 60 years, but it should be something that gives you enough meat enough that you can play with, um, mm -hmm. that we can make fun metaphors and we can make content around it. Okay. I think that could be really useful. And then if you could say like Lewis equals blank, maybe do a brainstorm like Lewis equals you know, social media VIP equals chess master equals, and just think of like, and when you're doing that brainstorm, 50% of those ideas, make them bad. So it's okay. Like don't put pressure on yourself. Like you're allowed just kind of like let your brain flow, go for like a 20 minute time block and you just write, 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 write. Or if you're more like verbal, feel free to just like dictate like a verbal brainstorm, like a, like a verbal diarrhea, just go. And then... And then we can always like sift through together and find the diamonds. Cool. You, you know what, what I was thinking and what I wanted to do? Um, I wanted to just drink with people on the internet and then just yeah. kind of have interviews and like us get like drunk, you know? Like, oh, I think that would be – honestly, Lewis, can you imagine if me and you did that? Like, but what? honestly, no, could you imagine if me and you did – like, that would be so fun because <sighs> I think that like shot number two – like for me, I don't – I only like drink like socially with friends, whatever. Um, and I don't drink a lot. So like when I do like three shots in, I'm like nuts. 
Um, <laughs> but I think that would be so fun, just like drunk conversations with people or like whatever your thing is, something that we can do like a live version that brings more people into your world, like more influencers. Have you seen that spicy wing challenge thing? Spicy? No, I haven't. Okay, I'll, I'll send that to you because it's... Cause, yeah, I think, I feel like that's, that's so interesting. You know, whenever you do something and then people, you know, know that that's what you do with them. Right. It's like you said, like playing chess, like, or like even playing like virtual chess. Yeah. Like conversation with people. Like, I feel like that's so, that, that, like, that's awesome in itself, you know? Right. Being able to like tune in. Because I know this, this dude, he was talking business and he was playing like Halo. He was right. just watching the screen while he was playing Halo. Well, one thing that I thought would be fun, one thing that I wanted to do is because every a lot of um a lot of people are um what was I saying? I totally forgot. Oh, a lot of people ask really boring questions. Like you get yeah. you can interview someone and then you're like, What's your top tip for this? And you're like, real original, buddy. So <laughs> I thought it would be fun because you know, What's Arnie, the number one thing. Yeah, yeah. What's the number one thing we need to know if we don't want to actually study, implement, or be accountable? What's the one thing that will make us a million in our sleep, right? Like those like bullshit questions. I thought it'd be fun to have like internet celebrities like Arnie on and say, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. If you've been asked this question before, I pay you five bucks. If you haven't been asked it before, you pay me five bucks. And so I'll challenge myself to ask 10 questions. You know, there's, there's this app me. named Whale, which I was explaining to. See, this is another thing, too. Like, I've been an early adopter of, like, some apps. And two really kind of helped me in my entrepreneurial career. Right. One of them was Whale. And so Whale is an app that they have everybody in Silicon Valley, like, all the top CEOs, CFO, right. CTOs of, like, Reddit, Uber, um they're trying to get elon musk in there right like, everybody is on this right and you can ask these people questions and uh you can you can like they can charge for like let's say okay it's a dollar to ask me a question so oh, you pay a dollar and then you um you know you pay for you pay for coins and then you ask them a question so that removes the that removes stupid questions being asked to <laughs> these individuals that people like i was I was getting to ask questions to people that you don't even get replies from via email, you know, like you never get right. a hang of them through like Twitter. Like imagine asking Tim Ferriss a question. Like he's not on there, but I, I wish he was on there. Right. But just all of that. And I got super close with like the team with like all, all the, since it was a startup, I got super close with like uh, asking questions to like the CEO and everything. Right. Um, and then just being able to do that like it get it pushes people to ask good questions yeah and then it also filters out the stupid questions for for the influencers that right. want to you, you know that they're, they're there and they know that they're going to receive quality questions and like right. those questions that everybody asks are like amazing questions that are right. really getting people going so right you have to answer in a minute in, in less than a minute that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I sent to you on Facebook, I sent you this spicy wings thing. Cause it's literally like real, like this is like a video I sent you, it's Kevin Hart and this dude just eating 10 wings that they get hotter and hotter, like spicier and spicier. And the last one will like put you in a coma or whatever. Um, and it's really funny. It's just like really funny to just like watch celebrities in pain. It's really nice. <laughs> so that's funny. For us to have our oh, I could do something with baseball too. I love baseball. Yeah. Right. Like you could challenge them to, I mean, yeah, challenge them to a game or I don't know. Something that you could put live that's worth watching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that we've got our work cut out for us. This is fun. Cool. So uh, let me check Sketch real quick for next week.